One of the most common tasks in Photoshop that a lot of people want to know how to do is to remove elements in a photo, whether it's a person or an object or an animal. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to remove people from photos, um, objects from photos using some quick and easy simple steps. So maybe you took a photo and there are a lot of people in the photo and you want a better composition where it's a little bit simpler or maybe you were in one of your photos and you want to upload it to social media but you don't like the way you look in it like you're you know making a funny face that you don't like and you just would rather have the photo be of the sunset or a sunrise or a landscape and you either don't have yourself in the photo or other distracting elements in it or maybe you're on vacation and people were in the background and they were photobombing your photo. You know, in those instances, uh, we can use some techniques to remove elements from photos. So if you want to follow along uh, with this tutorial with these specific photos, I've linked to these five photos in the description here on YouTube. Okay, so I have just the layers panel open and the tools panel. Those are under window, of course. We want to toggle those on and I'm using control or command plus or minus to zoom in and the space bar to click and drag around. All right. So in this one, if we wanted to remove this person, which I think having the person in there makes it a better photo for the composition uh, for this, it adds a little bit of interest, but let's say hypothetically you want to just a landscape photo. Uh, we could remove uh, this person from the photo, just press control. J on the PC or Command J on the Mac. That'll duplicate the layer because I like to work on a duplicated layer here on the Layers panel. That way, if we mess up or we want it to be partially transparent or otherwise want to edit it, we have our original layer here uh, easily available. All right, so we can clone that again or keep working on the new layer. So make sure we have this top layer selected. And a quick and easy way to use this technique is when we have photos where there's some kind of pattern or textured background or kind of a uniform pattern. All right. So it would mess up with a more of a grid, even though I'm going to show one example where it does kind of work, but something where we have a lot of water, even if it has a gradient like this, from kind of lighter aqua blue to darker blue or sand, things like that. It works pretty well. So for this simple example, let's choose the lasso tool here. You can press L on the keyboard or just select it right here. And then I'm just going to click and drag around the subject, including the shadow, because otherwise this would mess up. All right. So I click and drag around there and create the marching ants selection. And then we can go to edit, fill, we're going to go over content aware fill here next uh, later in this tutorial but right now let's just go to fill and then for contents just set it to content aware and then leave these default settings all right let's press ok and photoshop will use that algorithm to figure out what should be there and that looks pretty good so here's uh i'm going to just click off in the background here to deselect Here's before, here's after. And if we find we want to change it a little bit, there are a couple other tools to be familiar with. So if you go to, for example, the spot healing brush tool, which we typically use in portrait retouching, you can select that and press the left or right bracket to make that brush smaller or larger and just paint over a little bit to blend that in a little bit. Or we could use the clone stamp tool here on the tools panel. The problem with that is if I press alt on the PC or option on the Mac and sample by clicking when I have alt or option selected, then I go over here, kind of previews what it'll look like and I click and drag. It starts to show a pattern, right? Because it's repeating over here. So we don't want to do that too much if we want a realistic effect. Some news photographers, have gotten in trouble because they've used clone stamp to change content of news photos because that breaks you know the code of ethics in photojournalism we don't want to uh, adjust content 
in uh, news photos because we're assuming what the photographer uh, took a photo of is what we're seeing. That's not, you know, adjusting color or focus um, or cropping realistically, things like that. It's actually removing or adding elements to a photo that, you know, really change the photo a lot. All right. So that's a quick way to remove an element from a photo. So in this example, we just remove that individual here for a slightly different photo. Now in this next example, we kind of have a grid here on the bottom. So that has the potential to mess up, but let's go ahead and try this one. Again, these links are in the description if you want to download these specific photos. So control command J to duplicate the layer first. And then I'm going to use that same technique just use the lasso tool around this subject and then hold shift to add to it. So we're going to select two people here. All right. So now we have an active selection. We can go to edit, fill, content aware and let's go ahead and zoom in here did a pretty good job it's a little bit off right here with that grid maybe it's not very noticeable but yeah right here see how it goes in a little bit so that's an example where it actually might work better to use clone stamp for example in conjunction with some of the other techniques but uh, you would really want to make it match up with these lines. So then we can really control it a little bit better. We're taking this hit content, putting it here. All right, it's a slightly different angle. So that would be a little bit more difficult. That's just to show this isn't a perfect technique that's going to work every single time, especially when we have a grid like this compared to more of kind of a texture background, right? That's not a grid. It's just sand or the ocean water surface. Let's go ahead and do another example. Controller Command J. And I duplicated this on a new layer. And this time we're going to do something a little bit different. Let's use the lasso tool again and let's just select this photographer right here. Make sure to get all that little area around the individual that any splashing of water or anything that is associated with this individual here in this composition. We don't want a shadow or reflection outside of it. All right. So I can hold shift and add to it if we want like that. All right. And then alt or option click and drag to subtract from. All right. So instead of going to edit fill, let's just go down to content aware fill right here. This gives us some more options before we apply the effect. So if you go up here, we have sampling brush tool and then lasso tool. So before we finalize it, we could add to the selection and we don't have to hold shift when we're in this mode. If we also wanted to remove these elements from the composition, we could just click and drag around or you can hold alt or option, click and drag and you can remove parts of the selection from that selection, right? We also have some options over here, like the color of the sampling area. That green just means that's the area that it's going to sample from. It doesn't have anything to do with the color green. That's just for us, you know, when we're looking at this, all right? So in the opacity of it, right? So that's not going to be affected. It's just for this sampling overlay. All right. And sample all layers doesn't really matter here because it's just a duplicated layer. Um, and then you can experiment with color adaption high, very high default for this example, I think is fine. All right. We do have some options, whether or not we want to just uh, keep it on the current layer, which we could, that would have the same effect as the previous technique or we can duplicate it or a new layer. So I'm just going to say new layer and then I'm going to press. Okay. Before I do that though, notice over here, it has the preview. This is another benefit of using this technique. Instead of just going to edit fill, then content aware, we just go to edit content aware fill. We can see what it's going to look like. 
So we could adjust the color adaption, for example, and have a slightly different effect. All right, you could say none. Default, I think we do need a little bit there. So that's the benefit, we can preview the effect. So I'm going to press OK, and then I'm going to press the eye icon here of the two lower layers, and it will show our new layer here. All right, so you can see the difference. There's before, there's after. Now let's go to the fourth photo and let's say we wanted to remove the moon here, which it actually adds to this composition, complements it well, so I would not want to remove the moon in this, but it's just an example, all right? So we could actually use the elliptical marquee tool, hold Alt or Option to start in the center, and hold Shift for a perfect circle, and we can move it around, you know, something like that should be fun. And let's go to Edit, Content Aware Fill, And that looks pretty sim seamless. It doesn't have just a s static background. It is dynamic. It is changing this gradient from kind of a orangish, light orange to kind of a yellowish, bluish hue there. But we can see here, you can zoom in. It's going to look very realistic. So I'm going to press OK. And then deselect over here. Here's before, here's after. Can maybe see a slight edge of it. So we could use clone stamp or some other techniques as well. So it's not perfect in this example. So we'd want to experiment with those settings, especially since we can preview it before we apply it, before we finalize it, if we want it super realistic and not noticeable. Again, for this composition, I would leave the moon in there. This is just to show that this is not a perfect technique. We kind of have a slightly tilted horizon here. Let me see here. If I use the straighten tool when I'm cropping, yet slightly, it's not, it's not very, it's not tilted to a, a huge extent, but it is, it is not quite level. But, um, Let's go ahead and try to remove this shed. Uh, Photoshop's algorithm is not powerful enough to really do this where it looks realistic. And it's got too many things going on. So I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool, select around this shed, and then let's go to edit, content aware fill. It does a pretty good job, but notice this horizon it's not just a textured background. This is, and this is, the water and the sand here are pretty textured. It's easy to use this technique with that. But once we get to that horizon line, just like with the grid earlier, it's a definite edge, right? It's a line that can't really be too chaotic and kind of random looking, right? It's a definite edge that we need there. So I'm just going to go ahead and press OK just to show you how this is not a perfect technique in all contexts. So see how it does that. We could use the clone stamp tool. Maybe it would start to repeat a little bit uh, to fix that horizon, but it did a pretty good job in the foreground. It thinks that we need to continue to have these tracks here because they're over here. All right. But for simpler examples, where we have a nice texture background, whether it's a wall or uh, sand, patterns in sand, um, or the surface of water, things like that. This is a quick way to remove elements in Photoshop. My next tutorial on this YouTube channel, I'm going to show you how to move elements really quickly without copy and pasting. We're gonna move them so the background looks realistic using Photoshop's algorithm. If you enjoyed this and learned a lot, be sure to subscribe for more Photoshop tutorials. Thanks.